so. You heard rumours of old characters getting new buffs and becoming stronger, but is it worth it? And will they be meta again? Well, I'm going to go over them with you today and give you a glimpse into the future so you can decide that for yourself. The main goal of today's video is to show you how each character works individually, so let's start ourselves off with Liv. Liv actually hasn't changed too much. There were two main changes, one is how her ult works and one is a ping. So the first ping is if you do nine blue orbs. Yes, nine blue orbs. I'm not sure who would do that or when, but if you ping nine blue orbs, that seems to give her a power up of some kind. Of course, we'll look at the finer details of this when it comes to global, but this is just to help you prepare for the future. So other than the nine blue orbs, which nobody would ever use, the second power up, which is basically exactly how her kit works already, is if you do blue orbs, that creates a Grey Raven field. Anything in that field gets extra damage done to it. So the only other thing you'll want to do is accompany that with yellow orb. And now you can just basic attack for your full basic attack potential. This is nothing new, and if you already have Liv, you'd know this is how you play her already. The last thing to cover with Liv is her ultimate. You need to ping her ultimate and ping any four orbs. Just has to be four to get the full effect of her buff. After this happens, you can tag out to a different character, mainly your damage dealer. And then when you call her in, Liv gives you lots of critical, as you can see. This will hugely buff your damage dealer, and there's probably some other damage buffs in there as well. Afterwards, we have Rosetta. So with Rosetta and her first rotation in the team, you won't have her ultimate, same as Liv. But afterwards, you should be able to use their ultimates as part of the team rotation. But on their own, for Rosetta, everything's still pretty similar in regards to the bottom power-up bar down here. Either you 3-ping or you use ult, and that ult will take two, whereas a 3-ping will take one of these. Now when you swap in, she does her blue 3-ping, which will automatically take one, leaving you to ult straight away once you're on your second rotation of the team. Now, what's actually changed? Well, if we use her 3-ping, now we can see that we have our normal hold laser, so if you hold attack, you'll notice the bar starts to go down now. And in this time, you'll have extra damage shred and other buffs. You can swap out to another character or you can keep using. Now as for her ultimate, you want to make sure that you have only two highlighted because the third one will not get used by your ult. You have to do two things. First, you activate her ultimate. And then after that's done, you need to immediately press and hold attack. If you do it too late, it won't activate the bar that counts down as you just saw. So if you do it right, it'll look like this. Rosetta will then get an extra attack, which you can see here. She will do this attack anyway, whether you hit or miss, but this bar won't go down, meaning that you didn't do it soon enough. Another thing you'll want to do is drop her pet when she does the attack after her ultimate. Moving on to our next highly anticipated character, Alpha, the old Alpha. So what's new with Alpha? Well, to start with, we now have a little power bar down the bottom here. This also includes two little tiny highlight spots, which you can activate by doing a 3-ping. You can have both full, but it's not necessary to have both full. When you do, you can hold attack, and she will do this. All this does is rearrange your orbs so you can now sword wave. The attack itself is very slow and clunky, but the ability to rearrange your orbs is very useful. This means that if you wanted to use that feature, you would actually need 9 orbs, 3 to organize, and then 6 to actually activate sword waves. Once you activate sword wave mode, you'll see that this bar goes down pretty much immediately, and that's the timer for your sword waves. So once you activate sword waves, you can just sword wave until the timer at the bottom runs out. Another change that you'll notice is that if you are in sword wave mode, you can do this. An extra attack. You do that by holding to activate the first attack, which is this one here. And then you press attack rapidly to activate the second attack. Again, this will only work when she's in sword wave mode. Now, I'm not sure why you would do that over sword wave mode. 
what I think it's for is actually stacking it at the end of sword wave mode. This will mean that you miss out on some sword waves, but if you do, it should look something like this. Which is kind of cool and a nice finish to sword wave mode. However, again, you do miss out on pinging all your sword waves. Also, now your orbs are not organized when you come out of sword wave. So even if you had a bar there ready to reorganize them, now it's gone. The last change to alpha that I found was if you activate sword wave mode and then your ult, you can hold the attack button and she will use sword waves as well as her attack during the ultimate. I honestly can't tell the difference with the damage. I don't see any new damage numbers pop up, nor do I see any higher damage numbers pop up. Maybe it has an increased critical chance or something, who knows. Did you know that old Nanami got a rework too? Well, it's not that great, but it is there. All you gotta do is 3 ping until you have enough for 3 ults, continuously press the ult button, and that's it. Then you can ult attack, and you can do this, and that is Nanami's buff. Rinse and repeat. Here's Watanabe Astral's new buff. It's essentially the same with his core passive, so you need to 3 ping any orb and then a red orb. Now, this will start his core passive ticking. Once this is ticking, you can actually have it paused with his ultimate, which would look like this. As you can see, the bar is not going down. The next thing you want to do is dodge and press attack. Do this twice and then hold attack. If you do it right, you'll do this unleashing all the knives that you just implanted for extra damage. Now we actually saved the best for last. Zero. I've heard some pretty interesting things about this buff. Apparently it can even outdamage Lunar in certain scenarios. So basically you need to have your core passive bar full and then you want to ult. You'll notice something different. When you use your core passive after you've used your ultimate, you'll get orbs. Use these orbs as quick as possible, and then finish off with your ult again before your core passive bar drains. That's it, that's Vera's new buff. Of course we'll have to wait for Global to come out to really see the proper ins and outs of these abilities, but this should give you a really good idea of what you might want to aim for. And just so you know, it doesn't really make the characters comparable to S ranks. Think of them more like A plus ranks instead of A ranks now. And any S ranks who get this buff, it does bring their power up a bit, but it still does not make them meta. This is purely just rounding off their kits as their old characters, and I think Kuro's just using the experience they've gained over the last three or so years to improve and make the characters how they would have made them if they had their experience that they do now. If you'd like to see how all the new characters play, I've got a video on that, including many other guides. Have a look around and see what guides you need.